This video and all the tests I did started out with a very simple question. Do I need a timecode generator for every single device and do I have to keep them connected the whole time or can I simply in the beginning of a day go around with one, sync every single device up, disconnect it and be fine for the whole day? If you're here for the simple answer, yes, just keep them connected. But if you want to know why and more and also answers to questions you and I didn't ask, although we should have, Stay tuned, grab a tea, grab a coffee and join the investigation. Let's first take a look at the devices I've tested and if your camera, your audio recorder is not among them, don't worry because I think you'll probably learn what to look for and also what can and will go wrong. I've tested the Zoom F8N which has BNC timecode in and out, the Blackmagic 6K and 6K Pro which both have time code in via 3.5 mil mic input and it's a real time code input so no time code to audio bullshit. The Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro 12K with BNC time code input, the Sony FX6 with BNC time code in and output and last but not least the Sony FX3 with the original Sony time code BNC adapter. I did all the tests with DDTC ones, but it should be the same with tentacle sinks, for example. So the first test was with constantly connected timecode generators, just to have a baseline and to see if there were any glitches or any problems. Because, for example, I heard rumors that some people had problems with the timecode adapter for the FX3 and FX30. So I recorded over a span of 12 hours, every 30 minutes a short clip to later sync them up and see if there was any problem. I'm happy to report that there were no unexpected or big glitches, but the first interesting thing is that both Blackmagic 6K cameras are constantly off by two frames. And that is kind of on the edge of, yeah, I noticed that and mm, I'm not sure what's happening, what's going on there. And the second thing and what I certainly didn't expect is the Ursa Pro was off by four to five frames, constantly off by four to five frames. Both Sony's and the Zoom were on point the whole time. But remember, constantly connected to the timecode device. Second test was to connect the timecode generator just once in the beginning and then over a span of 12 hours, record short clips every 60 minutes this time. So after 12 hours, as you can see, the FX3 is off by around eight frames. The FX6 is interesting because you can see it's like not off, not off, not off, minus one, not off again, plus one, minus one, zero, plus two, plus one, zero. So in the end, it was spot on again. All Blackmagic cameras kind of disqualified themselves by losing the complete time code after a shutdown. As you can see, the timecode is definitely not where it should be, but interesting, from that moment on, it's kind of right when it comes to its own new timecode. Question is, where does the new timecode come from? And the answer, it defaults back to the time you set in the camera menu as the time for the camera. And it takes that as the new timecode. So once you turn it off, and turn it on again, it defaults back to the time. So absolutely useless in terms of remembering time code from before. And with the F8N also something interesting happened because after 12 hours, it was also offset by around eight frames. To me, that looked a bit off because I always had the feeling that the internal clock was quite reliable in this device. So I did the next test again over a span of 12 hours, but this time, Record one clip, turn it off, wait 12 hours and record another clip. And guess what? It was spot on. Hmm, strange. On to the next test. So I turned the device on and off around 12 times, but over a span of five minutes. And it was again offset by around eight to nine frames. I contacted support and they confirmed it. And it turns out that if you turn it off and on again, if at some point the clock is between two numbers, then the next time it starts up, it rounds the number up. So it sometimes gains one frame. I'm not sure how Sony does it in the FX6. If we take a look at the numbers, it 
maybe is something like a random round up, random round down situation going on, it works quite well. But if you're using the Zoom F8n and maybe probably other Zoom devices, keep that in mind. And remember, that's with the timecode device not connected. By the way, when it comes to the TC1 devices itself, they were all identical in terms of timecode after 12 hours. So just leave it connected then. It's, it's not over yet. Yeah, hello? S slow, sl slow down, slow down. What? Oh, f my life. Reality just called, there is more. I mainly use the FX3 for gimbal work and in order to be able to press start and stop on the gimbal itself, you need to connect the gimbal and the camera with this cable and it connects to the multi-shoe of the camera. And that is exactly the same port that the timecode connects to. So, the first thing you have to decide is whether you want to be able to press start and stop or you want constantly connected timecode. And if you want to use timecode, you have to put this dongle mess somewhere without it breaking off or being in the way or something. And this cable here is not so bendy, so it has a mind of its own, just like with a cat. You think you own the cat, but think twice, the cat owns you. With this setup, I like to use the HDMI clamp to hold the adapter in place here. It's janky, but it works. Maybe the newly released DAD C23 is a solution for that. I don't know how good it works, but uh, it's a alternative. It is an adapter that has a way better mounting solution and a not so stiff looking cable. Maybe that's something for you. As you saw before, even with the FX3, you can get away with not having a timecode device connected over a time of like one or two hours. So maybe using a gimbal, you can just sync it up and then switch to controlling the camera with a gimbal. Doing it like syncing the camera every one or two hours, I noticed during more than one project that the camera was sometimes widely off like 10 or 20 minutes. So. I had to investigate. First I thought that maybe the port is the problem and having it connected to the gimbal, pressing start and stop, turning it on and off, maybe that scrambles somehow with the timecode, but that's not the case. During further investigation I found out that not only the FX3 but also the FX6 has one additional problem and that has to do with slow and quick mode. Once you change into the slow and quick mode to shoot time-lapse or slow motion, which I often do on a gimbal, and I think you do that too maybe, then the time code stops. And for the whole duration you're in slow and quick mode, it stops at that point. And once you switch back to normal filming mode, then it continues from that time on. And so you lose whatever time you were in the slow and quick mode. Interesting. And again, that's with the timecode not connected. If you have it connected, it automatically syncs back to it once it's back in normal shooting mode. And for some good news in the end, I just for fun, because you never know, tested the Ninja V and the Blackmagic Video Assist on both cameras to see if there were some timecode differences between the internal camera clip and the external clip, and there is not. It works. To wrap it up, let's see what we learned today. Turning the F8 and audio recorder off and on sets it off by roughly one frame. The Ursa 12K is constantly off by five frames. The 6K and 6K Pro are permanently off by two frames. The FX3 and FX6 with connected timecode are spot on. After 12 hours without timecode connected and turning them on and off 12 times, the FX3 is off by almost 8 frames, the FX6 is on point and the F8n is off by 8 frames. Doing the same 12 hours without timecode connected but just turning them on and off one time, only the FX3 is off by around 9 frames, FX6 and F8n are on point. By the way, after 12 hours, no timecode connected and no power at all connected, no battery inside, it is the same. FX3 is 9 frames off, FX9 is on point, F8n is on point. All Blackmagic cameras forget the timecode once they were turned off, even with power still connected, and they default back to the time that was set in the menu. 
<sighs> so now you know. The best way is to keep your timecode device connected. But in any case, you should do your own tests with your particular device to find if they are constantly offset or if they have any other quirks.